right. What's required in part two? Okay, so now the algebra starts to roll out, okay? Thick. This is, um, if you, ha if you can't recognize the format, by the way, this is an HSC question, okay? Part one, part two, part three. They haven't told you, but you should be cluing into the fact that they're building. They're building. <coughs> Raph. Raph. I don't doubt it's a good conversation. It's just really loud. <laughs> it's your voice that I can hear. Okay. Now, so I look at part one. And I think, well, how am I going to use part one to do part two? What did you see? Yeah. Wait. I don't know. So I'll say it anyway. Show me something. Okay. Anything. It's fine. Because um, they're similar, that means that the sides are in proportion. Good. Or Good. Equal ratio or something. Yeah. So you can either say in proportion or in the same ratio. I'm going to say, so I've got a dying, I have a dying whiteboard marker. Um, I'm going to go A, B, on A, C equals AC on AD. That's the pairing that I have chosen. Okay? The way that I would say it is corresponding sides <laughs> in similar triangles are in proportion. By the way, in case you hadn't worked it out already or haven't been, you know, experienced the other side of this, this here, this here is a crucial thing in being clear. All the time, there's a whole mark on this reason, okay? So don't skip on it, right? That's that. So now I can fit in because I've got all of these labeled in terms of distances, right? So I'm getting this. On, is it A? No, it's X. Okay, and once you've got that nailed down, it's algebraically trivial. You just have to cross multiply and factorize. I believe we just need that. Is that right? Yep. As required? Oh, actually, I think that was what we needed, right? I think that was sufficient. Okay. Now, what you have to do is look at that as you go to the next part and think, why is that floating out in the middle of nowhere? Like, this doesn't seem to lead anywhere. It's like not <coughs> that much of a profound um, step forward, right? So when you look at part three, they give you a result. Right? A harder version of part three would be find an expression for y in terms of a and theta, but they really want you to get part three. So they tell you what it is, right? What clues are there in the answer that give you a nudge? In what, what direction you should go in? Yeah, Doris. Um, it says cos theta. Okay, so cosine, therefore, cosine rule, right? You've got angles and sides related in non right angle triangles. Clearly, I'm going for cos. So I'm going to go, what's my first line? <laughs> okay, um, here we go. So I've got this form, a squared plus a squared minus 2. Yeah, that's what I had for my first line. Yes. Okay, now when you look at this, this is just using the cosine rule in an appropriate triangle. Okay, look at what you're trying to prove and look at this. What's the culprit here that's standing out and shouldn't be there? The yeah. x squared. The x squared, which you just proved was this in terms of a's and y's. Okay, so that's why this just slots in from the previous part. That's oh two of them, God. right? So do you know how long I've been trying to do that? Question? Okay, so that's why I keep I keep asking, what it's clues like are there in the question, part. right? You lose an a squared there and there. Okay, um, what am I trying to get? I'm trying to make y, y the subject, same. right? So I guess I'm going to divide through by a, which leaves me with a minus two a cos theta, and, and then I just factorize. Okay, now, <coughs> pause. Here's the most fun part, and most of you didn't get there, so I won't spoil it for you right away. Look at it really carefully. Deduce, this just seems to come out of nowhere, right? That y, this guy, is less than or equal to 3a. Okay. Now, it's really hard to make this transition. It's why it's, um, it's the end of question 10, I think. Um, you have an equation here, and you have to transition, you have to apply some serious logic to get from an equation to an inequality, okay? Now you look at this thing, right? Which part of this do you think is the best candidate to apply an inequality to? Minsu? That guy. In fact, it has to be this guy, because A is some constant of some kind, right? Like we don't know anything about it, okay? And it's going to appear in the answer, so here's how I begin. Cos theta. Tell me an inequality about cos theta. Uh, 
Yep. Cost zero can, can be greater than or equal to negative one or less and cannot be greater than or le, le, uh, less. Is less than or equal to one. Good. So I have this, okay? Now I don't I don't know yet which part of this will be useful to me, but I'm about to find out. I just know that this is true. This is a starting point, I can apply logic to this and I can get to their result, okay? It happens I don't have a cos theta here by itself. I have a two cos theta. So I'm gonna do this, right? We've seen this before, right? When we were mucking around with domain and range, right? You've seen this before, okay? Now two cos theta, I actually don't have two cos theta. I actually have minus two cos theta. Now just watch out, because you're chucking this minus sign in here, right? Everything changes around. Okay, ah, but nothing really changes and you can see why, can't you? Right? What's the difference between this function and this function? Uh, the answer is uh, 2 cos theta. So there's that, right? There's 2 cos theta. And then here's minus 2 cos theta. I missed, but you get the idea. Okay? No, no, no. Anyway, okay, now. <laughs> the range is the same. It's still between minus 2 and 2. You with me? Okay. So. When I have a look at this, right, when I have a look at this, I want to be less than, right? I want to be less than. So which part of this is actually going to be useful to me? I, I'm thinking it's, uh, it's this part over here, right? Now, if, you, if that's not immediately clear to you, stay with me. You'll see what happens if you try the other side, right? So I'm going to write this with the correct subject in the correct spot. You happy with that? Yeah? Now, I don't just have minus 2 cos theta. I have... 1 minus 2 cos theta. So I need to add 1 to both sides to get that. Oh look, there's a 3. You see that? Okay. Oh, but wait, I don't just have a 1 minus... You, are you sick of me yet, right? I have an A times 1 minus 2 cos theta. So I have to take this thing and I have to multiply both sides by A. By the way, I can totally do that and not change around with the inequality. Why? Because A is A length. So A is positive, right? No principles violated. Oh, but wait, look at that left-hand side. I believe I recognize him. Nailed it. Okay. 